as part of efforts to standardize operations in the payment system, encourage the deployment of innovative products and sustain financial system stability, the Central Bank of Nigeria developed guidelines for contactless payments in the country and has released it to banks, other financial institutions and payment service providers in the financial space. Contactless payment involves making financial transactions without physical contact between the instrument being used for payment and the device receiving the payment. It is an innovative payment option for safe and efficient low value and large volume payments. We'll be talking some more to an expert today about contactless payments and all there is to know after bringing you the top stories from the Apex Bank this week, all in a moment. Stay with us. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, just hold on in that case. Let me call out to my pin. Uh, it is 4 1. Uncle, please stop. Stop what? You're giving someone else your personal identification number pin? Uh, not someone else. Uh, it's from my bank. Please hang up, Uncle. That's a fraud star. Th th that's not true. But, but they call out my full name. I am sure this is from my bank. Uncle, no bank is ever going to call you to ask for your personal identification number, PIN, your mobile banking password, or your card verification code, CVC. But it sounded so genuine. Yes. Hackers and fraudsters always sound genuine. But please, Uncle, don't fall for their bait. Don't respond to any phony emails text message, SMS, and don't click on any link you're not sure of. Even if they call your date of birth or your BVN, don't give them your security details. If you suspect any issue with your account, please go to your bank. Oh, I see. This message is from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Thanks for staying tuned. Here are the top stories from the CBN this week. The Central Bank of Nigeria has announced a local currency, the Naira, as a payout option for receiving proceeds of international money transfer. Director of CBN Trade and Exchange Department, Dr. Ozomina Naji, in a letter to all deposit money banks, DMBs, international money transfer operators, IMTOs, and the general public on Monday stated that all recipients of diaspora remittances through the CBN approved IMTOs will be able to receive payment in Naira in addition to the US dollar and e Naira. International money transfer operators are required to pay out the proceeds using the investors and exporters' IRE window rate as the anchor rate on the day of the transaction. The regulation takes immediate effect, and here is the updated list of international money transfer operators in Nigeria as of Monday, 10th of July. Central Bank of Nigeria seeks to engage an eligible and competent consultant to drive the implementation of its payment system vision PSV 2025. A request for proposal published on its website Friday, July the 7th says the effort of the Apex Bank to respond to recent innovations in the financial landscape coupled with the growing markets for payment solutions in Nigeria necessitated a new agenda for the payment system. The scope of work includes preparing and driving the implementation roadmap for PSV 2025, benchmarking the Nigeria payment system with international standards, identifying key areas of improvement and address those areas based on the prioritized roadmap, as well as identifying key trends and innovation opportunities in readiness for future products. The consultant will work with the CBN team in support of implementation efforts while providing expert advice. Promoting alternative payment channels as tools for financial inclusion, that was the theme of the CBN Fair in Boucher State last Thursday and Friday. During the two-day event, which according to the Director of CBN Corporate Communications Department, Dr. Asa Abdulmoumin, serves as a platform to interact with members of the public on policies and strategic interventions of the CBN 
for sustainable economic development in the country. Participants were sensitized to the modern payments infrastructure for ease of doing business, rights and responsibilities of banks and bank customers, among other things. Dr. Abdul Mumin, who was represented at the event by Assistant Director, Corporate Communications Department, Mr. Imor Isu, said the bank has demonstrated its support for businesses and economic diversification through its various intervention programs in critical sectors. The bank as a responsible and responsive corporate citizen has demonstrated the most passionate commitment in supporting business, businesses and promoting diversification through area of intervention in agriculture, health, manufacturing, and other key sectors of the economy. Therefore, the objective of this engagement are among others to set start the of the public on how the banks several initiatives can grow their businesses and contribute to Nigerian economy. It said the bank will sustain its efforts towards ensuring the availability of the Naira banknotes, urging citizens to see the Naira as a symbol of national identity, keeping it clean, treating it with respect, and to desist from spraying, hawking, mutilating, and counterfeiting the Naira. Let me assure you that the CBA will continue to ensure that it delivers on its core mandate of ensuring monetary and price stability. However, it is instructive to state that the bank shall also continually roll out proactive and innovative policies which will ensure that all economic subsectors receive the desired support. Thank you for staying tuned. This is from the CBN, a weekly program that brings to you reports and expert analysis of the actions, policies, events, and economic initiatives of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. The recently issued CBN guidelines for contactless payments was necessary in order to ensure that participants implement appropriate risk management processes and measures while keeping to best relevant standards. Mindful of the risk associated with contactless payments, the CBN has also set the limit for payments through accounts and wallets. Speaking further on contactless payment in Nigeria is the MD CEO Unified Payment Services Limited, Dr. Agada Apochi. Dr. Agada Apochi, many thanks for joining us this afternoon, sir. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Okay. So contactless payment has been around for a while, uh, but some people are hearing about it for the first time, I suppose. So let's talk about uh, what it is and how it works. Okay, it's all right. Thank you. So typically, the payment instrument that we are used to electronically is the plastic or the card, and it is a form factor. Today, when you want to use it, it must have a contact with the device that you are using for acceptance. That is how it operates in Nigeria today. But there is a technology where you can do the transaction in a contactless mode. And in a contactless mode means that the plastic, and when I say plastic, I'm referring to the card, or whatever alternative you are using, because again, you can use alternative to the card, does not have to come into contact with the acceptance device. Secondly, you may not need to enter a pin for transactions within certain value. 
So that is the nature and form of contactless payment. You can have it through a plastic, you can have it through alternatives, and the alternative could even be your phone number, which means that the payment instrument has been tokenized or digitized, and you don't need any other form factor than your phone. And you can then tap against an acceptance device, or it can come close within certain radius and transactions will be approved. So that is what um, a contactless transaction or payment speaks to. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about the benefits. What are the benefits or the advantages of contactless payment and who should be interested in it? Okay. I will look at this from the point of view of the holder, the person who is using it as a means of payment for goods and services, and also the provider of goods and services. So the first advantage will be convenience. The second advantage will be turnaround time or faster transaction cycle. Convenience because you can carry the contactless payment instrument in different forms and shapes. Like I said earlier, it will be on your phone. Additionally, the phone can also be the acceptance device for a contactless payment. But when you want to do a, a contact payment with a card, for example, today, you know our telephone handsets do not have the capability of accepting the plastic. You cannot insert your card and enter your PIN. Uh -huh. But when it is contactless, you can also tokenize the card and put the card on your phone and you'll be able to do transactions. Wow. Um, you can also put the contactless technology on any other device or form factor other than a plastic. It could be your earring, it could be your wristband, it could be anything that you wear. So that speaks to convenience. And for the merchant also, convenience means that they could use their phone as an acceptance device instead of the traditional point of sale device that we are used to today. Mm. You can also use it even for payment on the web. But beyond convenience, it's also a time-saving uh, factor because transaction completion time can be shorter and a good use case will be in transportation and retail. Okay. If you want to board a train, you want to board a bus, instead of queuing up and waiting for each person to enter their pin and for the pin to be verified before they board the vehicle, you can actually just tap and you move on. So that will lead to faster transaction cycle or a shorter transaction cycle. And that means that for the person who is providing goods and services, it will lead to higher turnover. And for the customer also, you spend less time. If you go to a retail shop also, you know you can have a queue. And when you have a long queue, it means that time is being lost, both for the customer who is paying and the merchant who is selling goods and services. And that is not to the advantage of any of the parties. It is also not to the advantage of the economy because time is money and the time that we spend in doing different things can be utilized for something else that is more productive to the economy. So those are advantages and benefits of using a contactless payment uh, instrument or options. Okay. All right. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the contactless payment has been around for a while. It was introduced in 2004 in the United States, but uh, we only started using it in Nigeria not long ago. Tell us about the adoption rate and the usage in Nigeria. Okay. 
adoption will be from different dimensions. I'll look at the supply and demand dimensions. On the supply side, adoption is relatively higher than the demand. I say so because most Nigerian banks and deposit taking institutions that issue cards as a means of payment today issue cards that have dual interface capabilities, meaning you can use the card in both contactless and contactless form. So on the supply side, I would say adoption is high, but supply itself does not equate usage because there has to be demand. And on the demand side, customers or holders are not using it as they ought to. That means that there's a gap between demand and supply. And that gap needs to be bridged. And one of the ways of bridging that gap is the kind of conversation that you and I are having now. With such conversation, we'll be able to enlighten the parts of the public and then adoption rate can higher. Adoption rate also will be driven by merchants because the acceptance devices that are being deployed by many operators in Nigeria today also have dual interface capability, which means you can use the card in a contact or contactless form. So there's a need for education of merchants, particularly their cashiers or sales uh, staff, so that they will promote it. And that way, they can even decongest the, the shopping floor. The, the, the experience will be better. When you go shopping, you will be confident that you don't have to go and stand very long on the queue, particularly if you are paying for a low value item or the basket size is so small then you should be able to use a T where you can do the transaction and walk away. It's even better when you have self-service kiosk where you do not have to go and talk to any human being. You can scan your items and once you scan your items, you can actually tap and make payment in the contact mode. So okay. adoption rate today, is, I would say, is low and that presents significant opportunities for operators to drive adoption and create use cases for members of the public. Okay, let's move on to the recent guidelines uh, by the Central Bank of Nigeria. The CBN has issued guidelines for contactless payment in Nigeria, setting maximum a limit per transaction at 15,000 Naira and maximum daily limit at 50,000 Naira in recognition of the risks associated with contactless payments. Uh, can you speak further on the risks associated with this innovative payment option? And uh, we look at it, whether could it be a reason for the low adoption rate? Okay, all right, thank you. First and foremost, I would like to commend the Central Bank of Nigeria for releasing the guidelines. It's a step in the right direction because that will create the confidence required and it was to define the boundaries and responsibilities for different actors and stakeholders so it is very important it also demonstrates that the central bank of nigeria is abreast of development in the payment world and is, is doing its best to use policy and regulatory frameworks to drive adoption so i will commend them having said that in terms of risk perception, and I use the word perception intentionally, um, it, 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 the perception is one thing, but what the experience will be will be different. So in terms of perception, yes, there is a higher risk with contactless payment than you have with contact payment. Because with contactless payment, you can do transactions within setting uh, threshold without entering a pin. And the reason is because the risk of loss of fund is lower since the transaction value is low. Additionally, you can also 
disable your card and you do not be able to work anymore if you lose your card. But so long as you don't lose your card or the payment, contactless payment instrument, because it doesn't have to be card alone, then there is no risk at all. And where there is a risk, the CBM has rightly defined the transaction limits that should be allowed. To manage that risk also, the CBN in the guideline has stipulated that those who issue contactless payment instruments should not enable the contactless capability by default. We need to ask the customer whether the customer would like to opt out or would like to use the contactless capability. And if the customer wants to use the contactless capability, there is a limit defined by the Central Bank of Nigeria. You mentioned 15,000. The customer can actually say, I want a lower limit. And that means operators should be able to enable a lower value for the customer. So if a customer says, by my risk appetite, I want to allow 5,000 Naira or 2,000 Naira, because when I go about in the public transport, I know that it doesn't cost me more than 2,000 Naira either way. And so I want to limit it to 2,000. Issuers, that means the banks or deposit taking institutions that give the payment instrument out should be able to adopt such limit for specific customers. Okay. That is another way of managing it. Additionally, by the central bank guideline, the merchant and service provider that enable payment for contactless technology or payment instruments also have to set a limit, which means if someone were to get hold of your contactless payment instrument and they want to do a transaction, a high value transaction, they will not be able to do it. Not only because your bank would have set a limit for you, but even on the acceptance device at the merchant location, a limit has already been defined. So through all that, we'll be able to manage the risk. But overall, the benefits and advantages of a contactless payment in terms of convenience, in terms of turnaround time and driving sales volume, far outweigh whatever risk that exists because the risks are manageable and they are being managed and the CBN has been uh, uh, thoughtful enough to define those risk parameters. Thank you for your time and your insights, Dr. Agada Apochi, MD CEO, Unified Payment Services Limited. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Nigeria is a rich nation of green land, rich resources, countless crops and commodities sufficient to feed and provide a means of livelihood for her teeming population. Chin up Nigeria, the giant of Africa, exciting times are here. We can be self-reliant and grow our economy if we work together to explore our potential. It takes a whole nation. Let us get involved. Buy Nigerian to grow Nigeria. That's the package from the CBN this week. Be careful not to fall for any fraudulent recruitment portal or loan scheme advertisement purportedly from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Get your information from trusted sources always. Report on reserved banking issues to the CBN Consumer Protection Department using the email cpd at cbn.gov.ng. Attach relevant documents. Call the CBN Contact Center on the phone line plus 234-700-225-226. Local courage may apply. Write to us through the email address from the CBN app gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter for updates and to watch up to date episodes of the program. We invite you to join us again next time. I'm Uliye Misik Dada. Stay safe and bye for now.